Hey! Everyone, it's me! And today, let's learn about the chemistry to make a great pizza together. Let's go! Now, if you've been following our theories for a while, you might be aware that I lived in New York City for about two mm. years. It's actually the NYC. place where game theory was born. See that door right there? Sorry, it might be hard to make out behind that massive head of hair. Didn't have enough money for a haircut. Anyway, that right th Wow, Matt Pat looks so young. Very cute and adorable. <laughs> There, that was my first ever recording closet. Honestly, yeah. there's a lot of Great tough job. things about living in New York. Everything is super cramped, everything is super expensive. The weather can be both brutally cold in the winter and brutally hot in the summer. But you don't want to turn up the air conditioning because your electric bill is going to jump by a couple hundred bucks if you do, so instead you just lay there melting into a puddle. The streets are crowded and the public transportation is a thing that sometimes exists. There is plenty of things not to love about living in New York, but one thing that cannot be denied is that New York has incredible pizza. I've lived on the East Coast, the West Coast, in the North, in the South, and nowhere in the U.S. compares. Heck, it even has some of the best pizza internationally. But why? Why can't anywhere else seem to match what New York's able to do with their pizza pies? Well, we here at Team Theorist actually did some testing, and what we found is that it all boils down to one secret ingredient. Love. Love. I'm walking here. Sorry, I, I, that was a joke. We're, we're talking about New York here. The secret ingredient certainly isn't love. Nope, the Sorry. secret ingredient is actually this. Water. But how could water. a clear, tasteless, odorless liquid make such a big difference when making a pizza pie? My friends, you are never gonna believe it. Be water, my friends. From Bruce Lee. <laughs> Hello Internet, welcome to Food Theory! Hello Internet, welcome to Food Theory! Hi! The show that smuggles water across state lines for science. Ever since that stint in New York, I've always wondered about the city's reputation as the pizza capital of the United States. Like, why? What are they doing there that's so unique that it can't be replicated in other parts of the country? If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me catch you up. New York style pizza is defined specifically as a large pizza with a very, very thin crust. It's thin and crispy, not gummy or chewy, but also not so crispy and hard that it's like a cracker. It also has some real nice char on the bottom. And yet, go almost anywhere else in the country and you can't find pizza that's able to do what they do in New York. Even in some of the biggest food cities. I mean, I lived in Los Angeles for a decade and I practically swore off pizza for those 10 years because of how bad LA pizza is. I did eventually find one place with great pizza, Grimaldi's. And wouldn't you know it, it was a restaurant that had its start in New York. But like, how hard can it truly be? It doesn't seem like it should be that difficult for literally any other part of the country. From a logic perspective, New York City's an island. It has no farms, no fields, no cows. In short, it's basically a desert for fresh local ingredients. So if anything, New York should be working at a disadvantage when it comes to the flour, cheese, and tomato that they need for a typical pie. But the truth is, the secret ingredient, the X factor, appears to be none of those things. The X factor. If you ask the locals, they'll tell you that none of that other stuff matters. They'll tell you that it's all about the water. That's right, the ingredient that's clear, tasteless, odorless, and mostly evaporates while baking is apparently the key ingredient for that signature thin, crispy New York crust. But um, when you ask why, no one actually has a reason. It's just the thing that the locals say. So you know what? I wanted to test it. To come clean, this is one of those questions that I've wanted to answer since before this channel even existed. In other words, today's episode is the latest installment in the old map Pat uses his YouTube channel as a platform to answer a personal curiosity that he's had for years. So, yep, a personal curiosity. Mm, sorry. Does the water in New York make that much of a difference? And if so, why? What is the secret ingredient inside of the secret ingredient? Let me tell you. When I started breaking down this mystery, it got way more interesting than I could have ever imagined. So do not click away. You're not gonna believe what I found. Biggest challenge with testing this whole thing was getting water from different parts of the country all at the same time. Luckily, Zach, one of our longtime researchers, had a wedding to go to up north in New Jersey. So. Well, thank you so much, Zach. Thank you. At my request, in between the vows and the reception, he was able to siphon off a few gallons of the good stuff. What else are wedding guests supposed to do while the bride and groom are taking their pictures? Eat? Drink? Have fun? No! They're- 
That's what you are supposed to do. Doing Come on. science. I then asked Zach to ship me a few more gallons from his hometown in Richmond, Virginia. A city not particularly known for its mind-melting pizza. No offense, guys. And, of course, we also had some local North Carolina water to use as well to give us a third test case. The goal was to create three pizzas, all identical to each other with only one variable. The source of the water. One using the New Jersey water, one using the Richmond, Virginia water, and one using the water from Raleigh, North Carolina. From the so case in point, there's only three variables, so results may vary if you try it out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, we could then compare the pizzas in the specific areas that define a typical New York pie. A super thin crust that's able to stay crisp, but flexible. We also looked at the overall flavor. All the pizzas were made at the exact same time using the exact same method and ingredients. One and a half cups of each kind of water were heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, then mixed with a tablespoon of yeast, two cups of flour, one half tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. We then stirred in an additional half cup of flour with a final half cup used to cover the kneading surface. Each ball of dough was kneaded for 15 minutes and then put into Tupperware containers where it was left to rest for about a day. You see, the flavor of Italian pizza dough actually relies on this resting and rising process to let the yeast start to ferment the dough and produce the signature alcohol flavor. You might think that you don't taste alcohol in bread, but actually all yeast-based bread has some level of alcohol in it. Yeah, sort of. Correct. One of the main flavors that makes pizza crust so delicious. Anyway, we left our dough to rest for 24 hours, which gave it plenty of time to proof and develop some of that flavor before we got ready to make some serious pizza. But shockingly, upon pulling the dough out of the containers, there were immediate and very obvious differences. Coming out of the resting bowls, the North Carolina dough was thick and tough. It looked like huh. a standard dough. The Virginia huh. dough was much wetter and more slippery. Very huh. strange difference, but the New Jersey dough was a beast all its own. It was thin. It was slimy. It stretched much thinner and much more quickly. It was literally like soup. Like a big watery oatmeal. When it came to tearing, the doughs made with Virginia and North Carolina waters were harder to tear. And when it did, the dough around the hole tended to be thick. New Jersey's dough, on the other hand, stretched very easily, which made it a lot more challenging to work with. But when it tore, the dough around it was always translucent because everything was able to stretch so thinly. In fact, uh -huh. to even get it to have some solid substance in order to make the pizzas, we had to feed it more flour. Real talk, guys, this was just one of those episodes that I never expected to have a real clear answer. I thought that this was going to be some sort of New York marketing ploy, but no. Immediately, it became clear that there was actually some truth here. The water was making a very palpable difference in the final product of the pizza dough. So, huh, that's very interesting to know. I kept going. I covered the pizzas with some homemade sauce and a mozzarella mix before throwing them onto a preheated pizza stone for 12 minutes. The results were mind-blowing. The... Uh, yeah, mind blowing that. Well, well, look at the right side, look at the right side. They did try to improve, so let's give the benefit of the doubt, shall we? Mm -hmm. Crusts on the North Carolina and Virginia pizzas on average wound up being about 10 millimeters thick. The New Jersey dough, meanwhile, with its more watery dough, 5 millimeters. Literally half the thickness. Clearly, something was different here. But what? The only difference, after all, was just the water. So, we decided to do some more testing. Not on pizza or its dough, this time on the waters themselves. It's not easy to isolate just one difference in the water between two regions. Heck, even within the same city, different water sources can have slight differences in the their composition. New York City oh. itself pulls from two different sources at times, leading some residents to complain that their water tastes differently from other parts of town. So just to make it crystal clear from this point forward, I can't really make any statements about New York water, New Jersey water, or even Virginia and North Carolina water because those categories are just way too broad. What I specifically can talk about are the tests that I did on the water samples that I had available. In order so it's sort of a limited experiment, but let's learn from the results that Nepe got. So thank you so much. Thank you. In order to figure out what might be happening here, the team and I did a bit of chemistry. First, I did a basic chemistry test to check the general acidity of the waters. All the samples sat around 7.2 pH, just slightly more mm. basic than neutral. Obvi so with my knowledge, right, it should be 1 to 14, and then on average, like, it should be 1 to 14, and then 7 is water. 7.2? Yeah, neutral. Obviously, this was not our key differentiating factor. Next up, I pulled out my handy-dandy pool testing kit, which would tell me all sorts of different information from total hardness, which is a measure of the amount of- Wait, 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 wait. Did I just something wrong? 7.2 is average. Is it neutral? I forgot. Sorry. <clears throat> 
calcium in the water, free chlorine, which shows you the amount of chlorine in the water that hasn't reacted with anything, and total chlorine, which shows the combination of free chlorine and the chlorine that's been reacted to with things in the water. It also told me that none of the water had pool stabilizer in it, which, you know, is a good thing, because this is drinking water and not pool water. But through these tests, there was one difference that was immediately clear. See the differences in those testing strips there? Total chlorine levels. Both Virginia water and North Carolina water, it seems, contain significantly more total chlorine than New Jersey water. Where New Jersey was registering something like one part per million of chlorine, Virginia, they were registering closer to five. That's heavy. Even for a pool. So what's chlorine gonna do in our food? Well, when you put it in water, chlorine kills microorganisms. In drinking water or swimming water, that's gonna be a good thing, because many microorganisms can make us sick. But when it comes to bread making, the chlorine seems to be killing off another microorganism. The yeast. Yeast is a tiny mushroom-like organism that chomps down on sugars and grains to produce carbon dioxide and alcohol as waste. Alcohol and CO2, they're basically yeast poop. If you have something in the water that's poisoning the yeast, obviously you're gonna end up with less of that signature pizza crust flavor. But flavor- Oh, it's something similar to a double H sword. Flavor isn't the only thing that's affected when you kill off yeast. To explain why that makes your pizza crust different, we have to zoom in to the molecular level. In bread dough, glutinous proteins line up and form chains connected by little chemical bridges called disulfide bonds. Long gluten chains can create tougher, crumblier bread. In fact, breadcrumb companies actually utilize methods to elongate the gluten chains in their dough as much as possible, thereby creating the extra crisp crunch that you expect out of a breadcrumb. On the other side of the molecular spectrum, shorter gluten chains create softer, chewier, and gummier bread. Now, when yeast dies, it releases a substance called glutathione, which is basically a partially digested gluten chain. Glutathione only has one sulfide bond, which means it can't bond with another gluten molecule and elongate the chain. The more glutathione you have, the more stubby, short gluten chains you have, and the chewier your bread. And again, some bakers want this. They'll purposely use dead yeast to create these shorter chains, resulting in softer, chewier doughs. This is the sort of stuff that's perfect if you want to make a nice, fluffy bread roll, but it's less than ideal for creating a thin, crispy pizza crust. The result? The additional chlorine in the Richmond and Raleigh water is killing off some of the yeast. That dead yeast is releasing glutathione, which is then interrupting the development of long gluten chains in the dough, thereby causing those doughs to become chewier, stodgier, and less like New York's. Meanwhile, the lower chlorine levels in New York water allow more yeast to survive. That living yeast in the New York dough then creates longer and longer chains, allowing the dough to stretch without tearing, which in turn produces the incredibly thin and crispy crust. But that's not all. There's another thing about New Jersey's water that could also be helping to make a thinner crust. Fluoride. Fluoride is something that the U.S. started putting into its water back in 1945 in an effort to help prevent tooth decay. But fluoride isn't just going to produce stronger teeth, it's also going to produce stronger bread. You see, fluoride is introduced oh. into drinking water as the molecule NAF. NAF is a salt, just like its more well-known cousin, NACL. And Oh, sodium chloride, um, salt. And just like any salt, NAF is gonna dissolve in water. The Na and the F are gonna go their separate ways and react with lots of different things. And scientists have actually studied what this process does in dough. According to the paper, ascorbate oxidase inhibition in dough by fluoride ion, adding salts into a dough is gonna cause the resulting bread to get sturdier. If this is true, we'd expect the places with more fluoride in the water to have the stronger, crispier crusts. And this is exactly what the data shows us. Both Richmond in Virginia and Raleigh, North Carolina keep their fluoride levels as close to the federal minimum of 0.7 parts per million as possible. Meanwhile, New Jersey, they aim for two. That is more than twice the amount of dough-firming salts that exist inside the New Jersey water. It's likely yet another factor that's helping the New Jersey crusts maintain a solid structure despite their thinness. This rigid structure can therefore support the same weight of cheese, sauce, and topping as a much thicker crust that's made with less fluoridated water. And again, the secret ingredient here is just that. It's just water. In short, I think the most interesting takeaway of all of this is that ingredients aren't always created equally, even when they seem to be the most innocuous thing in the world. Everything from your soil and climate to your local government ordinances can affect the end product of what you're really getting, even if it's called by the same name. And this whole thing water, applies not water. just to the raw ingredients themselves, but also to the recipes that are spawned from those ingredients. This whole thing kind of makes me wonder, could this be the reason San Francisco's renowned for its sourdough? Why New Orleans is the be-all, end-all of 
beignets, or if I checked cool. everything here in North Carolina, whether I'd be able to learn the secret of making the perfect biscuit. In fact, let me know down in the comments what your local specialty is. I'd be curious to see what local delicacies we have represented, and who knows, maybe me and my pool testing kid will wind up in your neck of the woods to understand scientifically the magic that's being created in your kitchen. So Dr. Strange magic. But, but have you said that right? I live in Singapore, so a bit far fetched. Literally far, so sorry. The next time you're in a different part of the country, or maybe a different country altogether, grab a few bottles from the tap to bring home and get cooking. But hey, that's just a theory. A food! Well, <laughs> making a pizza together. Yeah! I just love it together. It's just like, Matt Pat, thank you. Thank you so much for making this awesome video. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, anyways, um, I don't see the ending, the meme at the back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Comes with handle. Handle is edible. <laughs> that is actually true. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this live stream. I hope you find it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And comment down below if you have any share us. Down below, down below, down below. Don't forget to follow my channel. I hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Um, thank you. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Subscribe. Thank you so much. Subscribe.